الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وهل أتاك حديث موسى إذ رأى نارا فقال لأهلهم كثوا إني آنست نارا لعلي آتيكم منها بقبس أو أجد على النار هدى فلما أتاها نودي يا موسى إني أنا ربك فاخلعن عليك إنك بالواد المقدس طوى وأنا اخترتك فاستمع لما يوحى إنني أنا الله لا إله إلا أنا فاعبدني وأقم الصلاة لذكري إن الساعة آتية أكاد أخفيها لتجزى كل نفس بما تسعى صدق الله العظيم The ayahs that I have just recited are few ayahs of a long story mentioned in different parts of Al-Quran Al-Kareem. These ones that I have just recited are from Surah Taha. We won't have the time to go through the details of this story. And therefore I only recited very few ayahs of the beginning. But I won't even stand with that for today's topic because we won't have time to go towards the point that we would like to deal with. The beginning points are talking about Sayyidina Musa alayhi salat was salam traveling from Madian to Egypt receiving the prophethood and being ordered to go and talk to Pharaoh. I'm sure most of us, we know these stories from Quran al Karim. The point is, now Musa alayhi salatu was salam was given a responsibility. That responsibility was to approach Pharaoh, talk to him about the truthfulness of his deen about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not an easy task. Who is Musa and who is Fir'aun? We have two ways to look at them. One is, we look at them from the Islamic point of view, and we say Musa alayhi salatu was salam is a great prophet of Allah. Pharaoh is a person that is cursed by Allah. A person who claims to be a god will ayazu billah. But historically you can look at it and it will be a totally different pose that you would see. Totally different view. And that is Pharaoh. A person who has such a power that no one can even think of confronting him. Forget about having a person who had been running away from him and had to leave the country because he was afraid of him. And now he's hiding to come back and just see some of his family members. And he doesn't know what will happen after that. Most probably he will have to go back. 
But on his way, he's being told that you can't hide. And you can't go into that country secretly. Not only that, you will have to, when you go to the country, now you have to go and by yourself, approach the person that you have been hiding from. And approach him with the thing that the person, that is the most hateful thing to that person. Confront the person about his position. What power do I have, Ya Allah? Musa, what do you have with you? Allah is asking him also, وَمَا تِلْكَ بِيَمِينِكَ يَا Musa, What do you have in your hand, O Musa? O oh, Allah, all I have is one stick in my hand. <coughs> Don't worry, Musa. Just go there with that stick. Making the long story short, I don't want to go into these details, although they are beautiful lessons for the Ummah and for all believers from the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. But skipping all of these details to a point where Musa alayhi salam approaches Pharaoh. Now, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam has to prove the truthfulness of this deen not only to Pharaoh. Even to rest of the people in the in that country. So he has to approach each and every person in the country to prove to them that the deen he brought to them is a true deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how can Musa go from house to house, approach all of those people? Knock at each and every door? Impossible. He won't even be allowed to do that. Pharaoh won't allow Musa to have be so free and go from house to house over there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his own plans. When Musa alayhi salatu wasalam approached Pharaoh, his next step, that if he comes out of here safe, then he has to approach the other people and talk to them about this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you people worshipping idols, worshipping Pharaoh is not right. You have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illallah. Musa alayhi salatu was salam when he approached Pharaoh he talked to him about the truthfulness of, deen, of this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did Pharaoh do? That has some details also that we will skip it to only one point. And that was, Pharaoh said, Musa, how about having a challenge? We all will get together at a place. Now, Pharaoh is saying this, that Musa, I would like you to assign some time. When? I will gather my people and then you would come and in that in the presence of all of those people I will assign some people to challenge you and if you win then you're okay and if they win then we are right and you're wrong see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preparing that stage for Musa alayhi salatu wasalam where Musa alayhi salatu wasalam won't have to run house to house he won't have to go from street to street, from corner to corner, from town to town. He will be just at one place. And who would bring people for him? Pharaoh will call all the people to come and see Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Subhanallah. Look at Allah's plans. It's not that she says, Musa, then you have to go and run and call all the people. No, I will call the people. I will make sure all the people are here. All you have to do is just tell me the timing. فَجْعَلْ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكَ مَوْعِدْ Assign a time that we both will be there and then I will bring the people also there. And here, can you imagine what was going through the minds of the people when they were getting together over there? I mean, do you think they were the supporters of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam? They all have been hearing that this man who is challenging Pharaoh is the person who some years back, about 10, 12 years back, he killed someone in our country and ran away from it. 
And now this person came back with some magic. He went out for 10, 12 years and he learned some magic out there. He wants to come, he came back and he wants to challenge our God now. He wants to take over our positions. <coughs> and these slaves that have been slaves, our slaves for years and years, he wants to get them out of that slavery. This is the talk of the town. And finally they all got together. What would be the percentage of those people who were thinking we wish Musa would win? If we say point to one person that may be too much. May not be even a one person or a single or who's, may, may come down to a zero percent. Not a single person who is looking forward for Musa to win. With all the regardless of what their feelings were. Finally, when they saw the results, when they saw Musa alayhi salatu was salam, they saw what Musa alayhi salam did at that position, in their hearts, they were convinced. Even, in fact, the people who were challenging him, who were in the, uh, uh, who, who were challenging Musa alayhi salatu was salam, and who were in the field, they all embraced Islam and they took the shahada and they followed Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Those were the people who could have been the worst, with the worst feelings against Musa alayhi salam, that we are the ones in the field. The other people are only watching. If this was the feeling of these people, when it, it changed, imagine what could be the feelings of others when they saw that these people who were challenging Musa a.s., who were in the field with Musa a.s., they changed. They became believers. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his own plans. See how he prepared that stage for Musa a.s., and Pharaoh is calling people, and finally, when they saw Musa a.s., they are coming with wrong feelings. But when they saw Musa a.s., his performance, his prophethood, they were convinced, and they, came, they went back. Now they don't carry the same feelings that they came with. Their feelings have changed. Even if they are not believers yet, but their feelings have changed regarding Musa a.s. And the person, people who were in the field, they even became Muslims. <coughs> If you go through Quran al kareem you will find more of these. But I would like to read one thing from the hadith before we see our position. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he went for Isra and Mi'raj, he came back. Umm Hanik radiyallahu anha, the sister of Ali radiyallahu anhu, she was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's cousin. She said to Rasulullah, she begged Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not to talk about this to any person. Not to mention to any person that he had gone for this journey because surely people will reject it. And they will make fun of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, no, I'm a prophet of Allah. I can't hide these things. So he goes out. Allah's plans. The first person he meets. Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl, the worst enemy of Islam. Abu Jahl, to tease Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, asked him, What's new, Muhammad? Anything new from the heaven that you receive? He said, Yes. What's new? Last night I went for this journey and he started talking to him about the journey. He said, We're in trust. You went to Jerusalem? Then you went to the heaven and you came back in the same night. We're in trusting, Muhammad. You're making up for a lot of new things now. How about if I call people, would you be able to tell them the very same story that you have been telling me? I said, sure, I'll tell them. Abu Jahl is going into the streets of Makkah from house to house. Come to the Mukaba. Muhammad has a story to tell us. Who's gathering people? Abu Jahl. For who? 
for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. People are coming with their own feelings. Abu Jahl is telling them, you know, very interesting story, you know, let's go and listen to him. The story that he made up now is beyond our imagination, and beyond everything that we have heard from him before. Let's go and listen to him. His intention is, we'll make fun of him. Good opportunity to prove to people that he just makes up things with ayazu billah. So Abu Jahl is running in the streets of Makkah Mukarramah inviting people to come and listen to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They came. And they came, all came with the same intention that today we'll have a good time to make fun of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and prove to the rest of the people and his own followers what type of liar will Ayazu Billah he is. Finally when they came. And they heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They asked him questions. And he replied to their questions. He proved to them whatever he was saying was true. Many people embraced Islam and many others that left the gathering with that feeling that this person, whatever he's saying is true, although I'm not ready to admit it at this time. The feelings changed about him. When they saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, the stage of the world is prepared. That stage is ready again today. And we know it, that each and every person is looking at Islam. Regardless of their feelings, people are looking at Islam. And in order to look at Islam, they want to see the representatives of Islam. If we really carefully look at our news, at the media today, you can realize that all of these people have admitted, they have admitted to this fact that this Islam, this deen of Allah is so strong that each and every believer who takes the shahada is considered to be the representative of Islam. And this is why we see the word Muslim so-and-so, regardless of what comes after that Muslim word. Muslim so-and-so. A person does something. If he is a Muslim, you will see his religion with him. If he is not a Muslim, you won't see no mention of religion there. Why? Admitting, regardless of what the explanation will be from there, admitting the fact that this is such a deen that each and every person of this deen is a representative of this deen. This is the strength of this deen. It's not a weakness of it. It's a strength of it. That alhamdulillah, each and every person should be representative of this thing. But the only thing is, the stage is ready. We are there. People are looking at us. The thing is, what are we going to present people with? This is what we need to worry about at this time. As far as gathering the people, Allah took that worry away from us. As far as approaching people, that is also gone. They are approaching us. Making people see what we are doing before people didn't want to look at us. Now everyone is watching us. Allah's, Allah's plan. The thing for us now is what are we going to present people with? That's it. If we'll present it the way Musa والسلام, presented it, the way Rasulullah presented it, and the way after that the Ummah kept on presenting it, people love the truth. They don't hate the truth. People like the good things. If they will see the good thing, they will follow it. If they would really see the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way it was presented to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, believe me, people are looking forward to it. This could be a very lengthy topic. And at the same time, very important thing for us to know at this time. Our position where we stand at this time. 
We are standing on the stage where the whole world is watching. Now if one or two people that are supposed to be in the stage will think my performance won't mean too much, there are a lot of other people. No one or two people can really ruin the whole show. One or two players that are not doing what they're supposed to do, they don't have the proper performance, they can ruin the whole game. If you want to have a nice red brick building, two white stones in between that can ruin the, whole, the look of the whole building. So it's not what I would do there. Media is not in my hand. We have nothing, we can't approach people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put, put us on that stage. We are already there now. Now it's our performance that will prove that what we are carrying has any basis for it or not. The things that we had been claiming for so many years, is it true or it's only claims? Is it practical or only words? Someone shows us a tree in his backyard. They look at this beautiful tree. I, say, oh, I don't see any beauty on the tree. He says, yeah, there were some flowers on it a couple of years ago. But now it's dry. And I remember the old picture of it, so this is why I call it a beautiful tree. When people present us those religions, that it, it is beautiful, and they tell us, oh, because at that time it was good. It doesn't make no sense. Now we take them to our backyard. And we show them, he tell them, here, this is a beautiful tree. He says, this is a dry tree too. So you say, no, there will be some flowers on it in future. He wants to see a tree with, I mean, he, at this time he's seeing a tree like his tree. If we show them the same personality, when he shouted, I shouted. When he got upset, I got upset. When he was angry, I was angry. When he was cursing, I was cursing. When he was cheating, I was cheating. So you tell him, no, no, you know what Prophet Muhammad said? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That we Muslims are not allowed to cheat. So what you have been doing? We are on the stage right now. You can't just tell them that this is what I was supposed to perform. At this time, you show them the performance. They are there to see what you are doing. It's not what you are assigned to do. They were assigned to do something. And if they failed, we were assigned to do something. If we fail the same way that others fail, then we are not presenting anything good to them. And there is nothing entrusted, entrusting for them. Nothing attractive over here for them. We need to present them that tree that already has the flowers on it. And that is the tree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us, the tree of deen. Like a beautiful tree. The roots are strong and the branches, the tree is so beautiful. The roots are so strong that the branches are going all the way up to the skies, up to the heaven. It keeps on giving its fruit at all times. doesn't stop giving the fruits. It's not that it will give in future. It keeps on giving that fruit all the time. With this, now look at, very quickly, I don't want to inshallah spend too much time on this, very quickly look at these few hadiths. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Mu'min, Al-Muslim man salim al-nasu min lisanihi wa yadihi. Muslim is a person from whose hand and tongue people are safe. وَالْمُؤْمِنُ مَنْ أَمِنَهُ النَّاسُ عَلَى دِمَائِهِمْ وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ Mu'min is a person that people can trust on their lives, on their wealth. Iman and Islam, this is what the deen is giving us. And the Sahabi says, قَلَّمَا خَطَبَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِلَّا قَالْ he says, very rarely this would happen that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would give a lecture and a khutbah and he won't say the following words and those are La imana liman la amanata lah. A person who is not trustworthy, he is not a mu'min. Has no iman. Wa la deena liman la ahdala. And a person 
who does not fulfill his promise has no deen. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا يزن الزاني حين يزني وهو مؤمن A person who commits adultery at that time, he is not a mu'min. ولا يسرق السارق حين يسرق وهو مؤمن A person who is stealing something at that time, he is not a mu'min. ولا يشرب الخمر حين يشربها وهو مؤمن A person who is drinking alcohol at the time of drinking, he is not a mu'min. ولا ينتهي بنهبة يرفع الناس إليه فيها أبصارهم حين ينتهي وها وهو مؤمن and when a person is, uh, what would you call it? He's robbing someone. And especially a type of robbing, when you are doing it so openly, you're pr- proving yourself so brave that I can do it even while people are watching. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used the word, that people are looking at him and he's so brave that he can even rob people at that time openly and he can make the laws according to his ways so that his robbing will become lawful. At that time, he is not a mu'min. فَإِيَّاكُمْ إِيَّاكُمْ Refrain from these things. Refrain from these things. These things are against iman. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching people what Iman is supposed to do for them. So when they're standing on the stage of the world, when people are watching, they will see unique thing. The person doesn't cheat, doesn't hurt people. People did all of this to him and still he doesn't take revenge. He's not going beyond his limits. He has his limits. What's very special with this person? Let me go and ask this person, what made you do this? What made you think about this? This is what Iman is. That people will approach you, will have to, will be forced to ask what made, what brought this change to you. And uh, after that, what should be our answer? Of course, many times, practically our answer is different. I'm doing it because I'm a very learned person. This is my education. I work at such and such place. I graduated from such and such place. What is our reply to that? What is the practical reply to this? Practical reply has to be something that person sees it. I see a little difference. What happened? Why your actions are different? That is what I learned from Muhammad Rasulullah The time doesn't allow us to go any further with more ahadith or with this topic. The point that I would like every person to remember. The stage is ready. People are watching. And they want to see what is it that Islam can offer them. They don't want to read Quran. They don't want to read the hadith. They want to see the representatives of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the world. What they are doing, what do they have to offer us? How can they, how, if they are able to follow what they teach or not, and if they are, if we really do, and if we present that to them, then, inshallah, we will see the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there, and people will know what the truth is, and people will be able to see the truth. We won't have to do anything more. Remember, and let me end with this, remember one fact, nothing will happen to the deen of Allah. Nothing will happen to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is Allah's responsibility. But the only thing that can happen, that we will be the fortune, unfortunate generation that will leave the world without presenting it properly. It will get there. But we would be that unfortunate generation that will be, that will be leaving the world in that situation when we have failed to fulfill our responsibility to show people what that was. They were watching us, they were watching us, they were looking at us, and we started all doing wrong performance up on the stage, different than what we were assigned. And you can very well understand that if a person will end that show with the wrong performance, he was not assigned to do things and he started doing those things and things that he was assigned did not perform them, what will be the result? of that, and what this person would have to face after coming off the stage. Once we come off the stage, in our graves, this is what we should expect. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us to do what we are supposed to do. 
And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to fulfill our responsibility as followers of Muhammad Rasulullah <coughs> sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'ir al-muslimin wa al-muslimat wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.